It is clear that artificial intelligence has become extremely important in engineering, being able to perform predictive maintenance, detect objects and video streams, and even allow devices to make decisions entirely on their own. In fact, AI is so important these days that many are using it to do their work for them, including me, who is just waiting for ChatGPT to generate the next section for this video. Camera zooms out, pans to table, shows pro- oh, sorry, I'm just kidding. Now, for all the benefits that AI can bring to a project, executing it can be a rather complex task due to its high performance requirements, meaning that not all platforms can run AI applications. Thankfully, AI comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes, meaning that some types of AI can run on smaller devices providing basic functions. Well, in this episode, we will explore some of the best single board computers for use in AI applications, taking all factors into consideration, including power consumption, size, cost, and ease of integration. If you want to skip to the single board computer breakdowns, then jump to the chapter single board breakdown. And if you want to learn more about AI and edge versus cloud setups, then relax, get your favorite beverage, coffee for us at Electromaker, sit back and enjoy the show. AI algorithms are often computationally difficult due to how neural nets work. While the individual calculations inside an AI algorithm are typically trivial, it's the combination of many calculations in parallel that makes it difficult to execute on traditional processors. Because of this parallelism, GPUs are often the go-to hardware for AI applications, as GPUs consist of many parallel cores that are specifically geared towards calculating polynomial equations. However, Many micromanufacturers are now integrating AI accelerators into devices to help offload AI tasks from CPUs and GPUs, and this also helps to reduce power consumption, allowing for low energy AI products. But the term AI is rather broad, as it covers everything from training to deployment, all of which have varying levels of power and processor requirements. So it's important to understand the difference and how they affect an application. Before an AI algorithm can be deployed, it first needs to be trained, and this training process is extremely process intensive. Generally, this training is done on a very large computer system with extremely massive data sets. Here's a fun fact for you. Every time you tick those I'm not a robot challenges with the buses and the bridges, you are just providing training data for a large AI system. Anyway, once the algorithm has been trained, it is then deployed to a device, and this algorithm doesn't require anywhere near the resources that the training required. However, these requirements vary greatly depending on the complexity of the algorithm. For example, basic object recognition can be achieved on small computing devices, such as a Raspberry Pi. But those that allow for full self-driving, well, they require much more powerful computers. But this is where another interesting concept comes in, edge versus cloud AI. Simply put, if an AI algorithm is too complex to run on a device, it can instead be run in the cloud with a target device using the cloud service as an extension of itself. For example, images can be sent to a cloud server to process with the server returning the output of the AI. This allows a device to be extremely basic with even processes made in the 80s being able to take advantage of AI. However, this also means that there is some significant latency when data is transmitted and received, as well as the need to send potentially sensitive data over the internet. The alternative to this is to run the AI on the device itself, often called edge computing. While this does increase the performance requirements of that device, it does help to reduce latency while also improving security and privacy. So to summarize, training an AI is complex and requires plenty of processing power. AI deployments will have lower power requirements than training, but the exact amount of resources depends on its complexity. You can run AI locally on a device, often called edge computing, which is great for low latency and privacy, or you can run AI in the cloud, which means that even the dumbest device can use AI at the cost of privacy and latency. If you just got here after skipping ahead, well, you missed some rather interesting stuff on AI, but 
that's okay. Those who find knowledge unimportant are small-minded. But if you stuck around, then great, because now you understand the difference in AI types and performance requirements, and as such, you will find following our top seven single board computer list much easier. Not sure why we chose seven. Feels like a bit of an odd number, but then again, 10's a bit excessive and five isn't enough. Anyway, the list that we've curated will surely get you started in the field of AI. So, without further ado, grab your favorite beverage, coffee in my case, get seated, and let's see what the top seven single board computers for AI are. Oh, that is magic. Mm. The first single board computer in our list is the series of Udu range of computers. Instead of picking one specific SPC, we decided to group the range together as they have minor differences between them, such as improved RAM, CPU, and peripherals. By the way, we actually have a great article that covers the Udu, written by our specialist Ian Buckley. See the link in the description. The Udu V3, for example, integrates an AMD Ryzen embedded processor with an AMD Radeon Vega graphics unit, while the Udu V8 integrates an AMD Ryzen V1000 SOC and a GPU that is claimed to be on par with the GTX 950. Now, that's a substantial claim because I personally have two GTX 950s in my home lab server, and I know that those things can still kick ass even till this day. Both of these machines utilize the same 32 gigabyte eMMC memory, same peripherals, including USB-C, UART, SPI, I2C, HDMI, PCIe, and USB 3.1 and are both powered from a 19 volt supply. In fact, these two boards on the outside look pretty much identical, so projects can easily upgrade from the V3 to the V8 with little issue. Undoubtedly, one of the major advantages of the Udu is that because it runs x86, x64 cores, it is compatible with mainstream operating systems and software, including Windows and Linux. This also means that it can be used to play games run VR applications, and even power home labs. But of course, this video is about AI. And what makes the Udu especially great for AI is its powerful GPU, supporting for common operating systems and the low power consumption. This also means that the Udu is excellent for edge applications, whereby low latency access to a remote server may not be possible. The large array of peripherals and GPIO also allow programmers to directly interface with hardware, thus empowering robotic AI applications. For more detailed information, check out the product page on the Electromaker store. See the link in the description. Next on our list is this hot cup of coffee. Oh, wait, sorry. No, no. Sorry. It's the Latte Panda. Again, like the Udu, this single board computer comes in numerous variations, all having their own range of specs. What I personally love about the Latte Panda is its form factor being incredibly small, thin, and powerful for its size, while consuming low amounts of power from 5 watts on the low end to 50 watts on the high end. On the lower end of the scale is the Latte Panda Delta 432, powered by an Intel Celeron N4100 with 4GB of DDR4 RAM, 32GB of flash for storage, and an Intel HD Graphic 600 with a frequency range from 200MHz to 700MHz. Moving up in spec is the Latte Panda Delta 864, powered by an Intel Celeron N5105, integrating 8GB of DDR4 RAM, 64GB of eMMC, and an Intel UGH graphics GPU with a frequency range from 450 to 800 megahertz. That was a mouthful. This improved specs on the Latte Panda Delta 864 gives it an approximate performance increase of around two times for processing and three times for graphics compared to the 432. Furthermore, the larger RAM and onboard memory allow for more complex tasks to be executed on the 864, making it a more ideal platform for AI applications. However, both of these machines also integrate a microcontroller coprocessor, the Atmega 32U4, which allows for designs to combine the power of an Intel processor with the high-speed GPIO capabilities of a microcontroller. While the microcontroller itself won't be doing much for AI, it will certainly be useful in gathering sensing data, controlling motors, and interfacing with unique peripherals, so you get a lot of bang for your buck. When considering all of these factors, 
the Latte Panda is an excellent solution for robotic AI projects, AI home servers, and even in clustered systems combining the power of multiple machines. For more detailed information, check out the product page on the Electromaker store, see the link in the description. Assuming where that is. There. For our third entry, we have the loyal, the adorable Beaglebone AI. However, don't let its name fool you into thinking that this machine is underpowered, as it really packs a punch for its size thanks to its use of the Texas Instruments TDA4VM SOC featuring two 64-bit ARM Cortex-A72 cores and a C7X DSP along with deep learning, vision and multimedia accelerators. I really struggled to say C7X. Compared to the previous boards, these accelerators make the BeagleBone AI suitable not just for executing AI algorithms, but also for training them, something which is not easy to do on edge devices. As such, industrial, robotic, and autonomous systems can be developed that improve their performance over time, thus enabling smart home installations, high-end drones, and even self-driving systems. This ability to run AI deep learning is further helped with the BeagleBone's ability to provide up to eight tops via the Deep Learning Matrix Multiply Accelerator, as well as the integrated 3D GPU PowerVR Rogue 8XE GE8430 operating up to 750 MHz, offering 96 gigaflops. Try saying all of that when you've had about five coffees. One feature that stands out in particular is the depth and motion processing accelerators, which are used to create a depth of field map for distant objects while using only one camera. Thus, if integrated into autonomous systems, it becomes possible for the system to know how far away objects are with ease. So yeah, the BeagleBone AI is a pretty mean machine whose bite is more dangerous than its bark. For more detailed information, check out the product page on the Electromaker store. See the link in the description, depending on where we host the video. Next on our list is a machine that is so obscenely powerful that any maker who gets his hands on it would probably be the most OP maker in the history of makers. The range of Jetson Orin systems from NVIDIA were designed from the ground up to accelerate AI projects and come in numerous form factors. Fundamentally, the Jetson Orin range of machines are system on modules that are then integrated into larger systems, with the three primary series being the Jetson Orin Nano, the Jetson Orin NX, and the Jetson Orin AGX. Each of these come in their own variations. Even though these modules have varying specs, they are all designed to specifically work with AI applications, offering AI accelerators, uh, massive computational speeds, low energy consumption, and plenty of I.O. For example, the nano modules offer computational speeds of around 20 to 40 tera operations per second, while the AGX comes in at a whopping 275. What this translates to is that Jetson systems are not only able to execute AI algorithms, but train them too. This means that it's possible to create AI systems that are able to improve their performance over time, just as with the BeagleBone AI board. Now, of course, NVIDIA has developed the modules, but it isn't the only provider for machines. For those who want to go a bit more upmarket, the Jetson AGX Orin 32GB H01 kit is an excellent choice, coming in a cube enclosure and offering some of the best performance that the Jetson range has to offer. For those looking for smaller scale applications, the Recomputer J3010 is not only small in form factor, but also in power consumption and price. There are plenty of other features that both of these single board computers offer, so it's really important to check out their product pages and read more into their specifications. But fundamentally, if you are looking for a powerful single board computer for your next AI project, you most definitely cannot go wrong with a Jetson. Oh, and uh, just before we wrap up this single board computer, NVIDIA just released a breaking story that it will be bringing its own version of ChatGPT called Chat with RTX, which runs on their AI chat engine locally. So yeah, you would be able to run your own chat AI systems without an internet connection. For more detailed information, check out the product page on the Electromega store. See the link in the description somewhere. Now for a more unusual single board computer, the Upsquare Pro 7000 series. 
While this machine itself isn't dedicated to AI tasks, it contains numerous peripherals and features that make it an excellent contender for AI applications on the edge in domestic, commercial, and industrial operations. At the heart of this computer is the Intel Atom 7425E, but this is upgradable to others including the Intel N50, N97, and the i3 N305. Memory options range from 4GB to 16GB, and onboard memory storage is available in both 32GB and 64GB variations in eMMC for extra speed. However, the hardware that really matters on these machines is the 12th generation Intel UHD graphics. This GPU is able to provide enhanced media and AI capabilities via its use of up to 32 execution units, support for three external displays, and 3.5 times graphics improvement in machine learning benchmarks compared to the previous generations. Because this single board computer can support industrial standard 12 volt input rails and time sensitive networking over Ethernet, it is an excellent candidate for those looking to incorporate AI into industrial systems. Furthermore, the inclusion of a 40 pin hat with GPIO, two RS-232s, two RS-422s, and two RS-485s allows for the system to communicate with numerous different systems simultaneously. Simultaneously, depends. And the ability to run most x86, x64 based operating systems brings maximum software support. If these factors haven't already convinced you to use this board for your next AI industrial project, well, then get ready to hold on to your coffee that you will surely be spitting out everywhere because this single board computer has also been pre-validated to work with Intel's Edge Insights for Autonomous Mobile Robots, meaning that you can be sure to develop amazing industrial automation systems with this platform. For more detailed information, check out the product page on the Electromaker store, see the link, in the description. Oh, that's good. This next single board computer was a difficult decision to make as it is an extremely famous machine that, well, needs no advertising. The Raspberry Pi 5 itself is not specifically designed to work with AI applications containing no hardware accelerators specifically for neural nets. So you may be scratching your head and wondering why have we included it in this list? Well, the reason why the Pi deserves to be in the top seven simply comes down to the fact that the Pi Foundation has made this thing so darn powerful that it certainly is able to run AI algorithms. Of course, it won't be able to provide you the performance that other SBCs can provide, such as the Jetson, but the low price point of the Pi 5 combined with the vast amount of support for it makes it an excellent candidate for those starting out with SBCs and AI. Compared to its predecessor, the Pi 5 is able to offer significantly faster inference times thanks to the inclusion of a Video Core 7 VII, running at 800 MHz, and the use of an ARM A76 clocked at 2.4 GHz with four cores enables for numerous tasks to be run simultaneously. Furthermore, the support for up to 8 GB of DDR4 RAM operating at 4,267 MHz helps to eliminate bottlenecks between memory and the CPU, which can otherwise often slow down complex tasks. So that's pretty darn fast, that, that speed. It's ridiculous. Finally, the small size of the Raspberry Pi, the low power consumption, and the access to a 40-pin GPIO header makes it ideal for integration into other projects. Even if it's only being used as a prototyping platform, the Pi 5 rarely disappoints makers, except for the fact that they are <laughs> rarely in stock. For more detailed information, check out the product page on the Electromaker store. See the link in the description somewhere. Here, there, anywhere. Mm. Mm. Oh, lovely. Now we come to the last of the seven single board computers, and for this one, we chose something a bit unorthodox. In fact, by the technical definition of SBC, this item may not even be valid, as it is technically a system on module mounted onto a carrier board. But I am willing to take the risk with our audience, as this machine carries some serious specs, and, well, its design makes it ideal for both prototyping and practical application. The board that I am talking about is the Portenta X8, developed by no other than Arduino themselves. 
this system on module integrates an NXP i.mxam mini SOC, which itself incorporates an ARM Core A53 quad core CPU with a maximum frequency of 1.8 gigahertz per core. It also has a secondary Cortex M4 with a maximum frequency of 400 megahertz and on top of that, an STM32H747 dual core Cortex M7 up to 480 megahertz and an M4 up to 240 megahertz. So clearly someone at NXP didn't think this SOC had enough microcontrollers. In addition to these obscene processor specs, the Portenta X8 also integrates Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, allows for real-time dedicated cores to work on I.O. and minimal latency and low energy consumption. It also has secure OS capabilities and support for over-the-air updates thanks to the use of Linux, hardware level security and support for all the software libraries and tools that Arduino can provide. However, this SOM on its own is far from being useful which is why when combined with the Portenta Max Carrier, this system on module becomes a seriously capable single board computer. The Portenta Max Carrier provides additional hardware to the Portenta, including Ethernet, LoRa or LoRa, CAT M1 and MB IoT, also a micro SD card slot, battery power input and various IO headers for exposing the GPIO provided by the Portenta. So it's got a lot of stuff. So why is this board suitable for AI? Well, AI is more than just high processing capabilities, large RAMs and excessively large GPUs. In serious applications, privacy and security are also critical factors and having a secure foundation is elemental in such designs. The Portenta easily provides this thanks to its use of hardware security. So AI applications involved with potentially sensitive data, such as images and audio, or those that could cause harm, such as having access to heavy machinery, can run safe in the knowledge that they will be very hard to hack. For more detailed information, check out the product page on the Electromaker store. See the link in the description. Now that we've looked at our top seven single board computer choices, it's time to ask, which one would I get? Well, that isn't exactly an easy choice and really does depend on the application. Simply put, if you are looking to start with AI in simple applications and just want to get into single board computers, well, you can't really go wrong with the Pi. But if you need to make a project that gives you more oomph, then the BeagleBone AI is the way to go. If instead you need to have a project that is going to be used in a home cluster processing AI requests, then the Latte Panda or Jetson range of machines will be right for you. Applications that need to work on the edge, potentially levering cloud AI, will do well to use the Udo and the UpSquared boards. And for those looking to create complex industrial systems, well, the Portenta is clearly your choice. Single board computers are available in the thousands. Well, except the Pi 5, but hey, we can all dream. But while the seven chosen in this video are certainly great candidates for AI, they are not the only ones. Furthermore, it is very possible that there are other boards out there which would wipe the floor with some of the computers on this list. But because there are so many, it can be hard to find these. If you can think of any machines that deserve to be in this list, then leave them down in the comment section below and well, who knows, maybe we'll include them in a future video revision. And uh, I'll also see if I can get my mate Richard to give out free machines to the best suggestions, but no promises. If you like the work we do here at Electromaker, then head over to the Electromaker store where you can find all the single board computers mentioned in this video and loads more. This is Robin Mitchell signing off.